So we have a patron who previously used to go by the name Hindutva Infiltration. Okay, Hin the Hindutva have infiltrated our patron by financially supporting us. Um, yeah. But now Hindutva Infiltration has changed, I'm assuming his name to just Fascista. I'm not sure how to take that. Either <laughs> yeah. You're just going because... full mask off or you're being <laughs> tongue in cheek, but I'm going to just take it for what it is. I think it's because we told him or her that, you know, you know, we're in, you know, maybe because like, if you guys don't like Hindutva, you, you know, is, do you prefer this? Maybe that's what he's trying to say. <laughs> is this better? Okay. Yeah. So All right. fascista is asking mm -hmm. like Indian intellectual masses who hunkered down on Shaheen Bog roads for months, parentheses, despite fascist police consistently warning them to shift their protest to an alternative park. Do secular activists of the U.S., like Susanna, have plans to block Times Square, define all road traffic laws because there's no secularism without undoing the CAA-esque Lautenberg Specter Amendments and its effects? So let me explain what this question is about. So this Hind Hindutva supporter is asking me basically about a pretty niche um, refugee amendment in the United States that I can detail in a second. And in doing so, they're referencing mass protests that happened over the CAA um, bill. That's what Shaheen Bag Rhodes refers to. And well, you have to say, tell people what, thing. what is the CAA bill? Thank you. People don't so the CAA bill is an Indian bill that was passed in December 2019. It's the Citizenship Amendments Act. And it broadly um fast tracks certain religious minorities from certain countries from afghanistan bangladesh and pakistan if you are farsi sikh jain hindu christian um anything but muslim wait i said farsi i meant parsi parsi um basically everything except muslim and, mm -hmm. and if you were and in atheism. india if if you immigrated to India before 2015 and you are from either of these three countries, and if you are from any of those specific religions, you get fast tracked towards becoming a lawful citizen of India. Um, and what this person is comparing it to is something that uh, Hindu or CAA supporters in general compare um it to in the u.s as a way to gain support for the u.s oh, so, so they're the saying US, we did so they're saying the caa in india is not bad why are you guys criticizing us for accepting refugees from almost every religion except islam you shouldn't be criticizing us because in the u.s we have something similar okay what do we have in the u.s Go on. so in the u.s we have what something called them? the lautenberg amendment which and this is a quote um, which enables citizenship to ident uh, identified persecuted religious minorities in the erstwhile former Soviet Union. And then later, Iran was added through the Specter Act. So for the Soviet Union, it basically fast-tracked refugee status um, and citizenship to uh, Jews or evangelical Christians from the former Soviet Union. And for Iran, uh, and this was added in the early 2000s, um, they get th this um, kind of special refugee privilege, not privilege, it's just um, Fast eh, whatever. Uh, yeah, priority, they, priority for status. Iranian Jews, Christians, and Baha'is. Mm -hmm. They they basically jump the queue to gain citizenship. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a religious so, test, government religious test. Is so this still in? Is that still um, in effect? Um, it has to be renewed every single year. Okay. So to my understanding, it is in effect, but it's not permanent. It has to be actually renewed and approved every year. Right, right, right. Yeah, I mean, we're, I mean, I'm against that. I think government shouldn't have any religious tests on anybody. You could do a, anybody who's prosecuted should have like a, I mean, if, if you're a... I don't think... I don't know what you're talking about in terms of religious test. What do you mean? So, like, they're saying that if you're... you're, Are you suggesting that if somebody from Iran, if they're a Christian, 
um, they get priority status as a refugee compared to other people. Yes. I mean, yeah, I think like it's, instead of that, it should be based on the argument should not be based on your religion. The argument should be based on um, in, in it could indirectly be the religion. It could be like the level of you know persecution you're facing, persecution or persecution, persecution, persecution you're facing. Um, and if it happens to be because of your religion, then so be it. You get priority, but it shouldn't be like it's because of your 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 religion. You know the argument should be like we're gonna evaluate the level of oppression or persecution you're dealing with, and that's how you get a refugee status or not. Not just like skip that step and and, and go like oh if you're just Christian, therefore you get priority status. You know what I mean? Like it should be a step in between. If it happens to be because of the religion, okay, so oh yeah. But if you're a Shia Muslim and you're getting persecuted for some other reason that makes it equal to the persecution that a Christian might have get, gotten before being a Christian in Iran, then you also get the same level of prior, uh, priority. Do you know what I mean? Does No, yeah. before you say, does it make sense? Yeah, go on. So just to clarify, the Lautenberg Specter Amendments positively discriminates amongst minorities by creating a reasonable classification to exclude the Muslim majority in, in the case of Iran. Um, this U.S. law, therefore, si specifically enlists religious communities of former Soviet Union and religious minorities in Iran in order to confer a benefit on them to the exclusion of all other refugees and the benefit being that they do not need to individually demonstrate a well-founded fear of persecution well so yeah i mean i actually don't necessarily yeah. think that's a bad thing if you can demonstrate yeah. systemic discrimination yeah, and persecution i'm sorry i think i'm not making myself clear that. yeah um uh, again you don't have to make an individual case for it because we know for example let's say that i don't know if you're if there is an understanding that being a Christian, you know, in Iran, again, it's not actually being a, it's being a Christian convert, for example, that's even that's worse. Okay, in Iran, you don't have to make an individual case for it, but the language shouldn't be like, oh, this is because you know you just you're a Christian, therefore you get protection. The language should be, if you're persecuted you get protection you get a priority refugee status right so that means that if for some other reason for like a shia muslim okay individually shows that they're also being persecuted by the government you know they would have to prove it in on an individual case in a way that a christian might not have to because you could you have is a, a christian convert doesn't have to because we have a, an understanding of what a christian convert has to deal with right but again, it's not. It's not. It's not. The main. The main driver is the persecution, and the government is not like, "Oh, you're a Christian." I don't want the government to have the language within the law that you're a Christian, therefore you get priority status. The language within the law, right, should be, "You're being persecuted, therefore you're getting protection." Do you know what I mean? I, because. You know, for example, let's say if, if from in, in the because it matters what's in the law. It, it matters that the government doesn't seem to be taking any religion, um, any any religious prefer, preference. Like the language has to make it clear that the main factor at play here is the fact that you're being targeted, not that because you, we value your religion or anything like that. Because if you don't do that, then this could set a precedent for all sort of other things that are unfounded you know what i mean by the way this is um i do want to mention uh, that whatever our disagreement around this might be the case in india is a lot worse than th this example okay like by principle i could see that yes we should also be against i mean i am at least against this case this kind of language being used by i, I mean i don't I, I don't exactly know i have to go study how it's been phrased. Maybe I would be for it once I see that it's not, maybe it's being mis misrepresented or maybe I, I'm not uh, understanding the law directly. But there is, in India, there is this also this understanding that there is an attempt by many politicians for, a demo, for demographic engineering of India and for maintaining 
India as a Hindu state, uh, and as and with this understanding by many politicians in India that Muslims are the enemies within uh, a foreign agent um, that are that are a threat to the identity of an of an entire nation, the, the, a threat that they, that needs to be dealt with. This is an understanding. But we don't. But the but any refugee laws in in by the United States, even if we even if we have a problem with the way the language is being phrased, we don't have the same level of concern because the refugee laws in the United States, we don't even have even that even the slight assumption that this could be about demographically engineering United States with a higher population of Christians through the refugee laws. You know what I mean? Like this is not even remotely part of the conversation. So obviously based on the background of what Indian politicians say and do, and this law coming on the back of that by the BJP party and everybody who's advocating for all of that, um, then we can see that this is a weapon. Um, I mean, even if you don't think if it's a weapon, you could see why somebody would think this could be a weapon and you know you could see why people would be alarmed about it so the scale of the worry is like astronomically different but yeah go on susanna i want to clarify the language of the lautenberg uh uh amendment so i'm gonna skip past some of the stuff but it, it details who it applies to i've already discussed who that applies to and then it says and may include other groups of refugee applicants for which such standard profiles would be appropriate. In other words, oh. the Lautenberg Amendment language does two things. It requires the U.S. Attorney General to create a broad category of re persecuted religious minorities who would qualify for admission to the U.S. as a refugee. Well, the law then lists, you know, the people who must be a part of that category. There's no direct limit to this category, only to these categories and exclude others. Indeed, the clause specifically says that these categories, quote, may include other groups. So in, in terms of the CAA, on principle, I actually don't have a, um, such a big problem with it, except that correct me if I'm wrong, because I'm still learning about the details. Um, there is a lot of leeway for just illegal immigrants instead of just refugees. And um, which is a big difference from the Lautenberg Specter Amendment. But I don't think having a state acknowledge that there is systemic discrimination against certain religious minorities and saying that, hey, we're going to acknowledge that and like have this thing to help them. I don't think that's necessarily a you violation can, of secularism. You can acknowledge that not in the law and the, because the law is rigid. You can't if things change, you can't change it that easily. Within the law, just say anybody facing religious persecution, just say anybody facing religious persecution. And then outside of the law, just don't name the religions so that you're not this if violate if within the law you're actually identifying the religions that violates secularism. That's picking and choosing which religions are like, you know, this this is not the government's job. Just be like people who are facing religious per persecution get to you know get the this status or that status as a refugee. Okay. Then independent from the law, you could have government bodies that are responsible for analyzing who's facing religious persecution. Just don't name the goddamn religion within the law. Like, how do you not see that's a violation of your secularism if you actually identified a name of the religion within the law? Even if the law then goes on to say that other groups also then qualify? Then why did you have to name the goddamn religion if you say that? Just say- because you're talking you, about a specific problem. Well, you don't, the specific problem is religious persecution, okay? What if all of us, you know, if you are saying and other religions, then you never had to. Then you have to analyze who's who's facing more persecution based on new events or based on what happens. Then you never had to mention the religion. The fact that you're picking religions in the law, like how is that not a violation of sec your secularism? Like your name, you're picking. The government is now identifying, putting it in you know, writing that these religions get this status and these religions get that status. Just say whoever is facing religious persecution. 
Like all of a sudden, if Shias are facing persecution because in Pakistan now Shias apply to like you can't like you can't go. Yeah. Well, so that actually brings me. But the we big problem that I have with the CAA is mostly, um, and again, like I said, I'm still learning about this in detail, and it's complicated and confusing. But the way that some people talk about it and it's reported on. There's this ambiguity, and for my understanding, in relation to illegal immigration versus actual um, people seeking asylum and refugees, and there's a big difference. Um, but also, if you were going to make a law that does prioritize specific religious minorities, it should 100% include persecuted Muslim minorities, especially in Pakistan, Afghanistan, and Bangladesh. Like, just, how are you not going to include the Ahmadis or like Shias? Although I do know Ahmadis also face. Then some that proves my in point. India. Just like then, don't pick and choose. Just say religious persecution, and based on current news and events, you have governmental bodies that will be responsible in objectively analyzing who's facing what discrimination. Just like don't name them. It's that's obviously. That's the violation of secularism. Like it's not, it's such an obvious violation of secularism when you have a law that names different religions that I don't even know how to argue this. Like, I think we should move on because it's, it's I think it's, it's, it's so easy. This is such an easy thing to, uh, yeah. The biggest anyway. problem I have with it is the combination we, we of the CAA to. and the NRP and no That's NPR the and the NRC. That's where the, like, yes. it really comes in for me. The, but um, that was by design. That's the whole point of it. Yeah. The whole point of it was like it's so obviously an attempt to make India a Hindu state that like people who denying it are just think they're thinking that we're idiots. Like that was the goal. Like these two things were were introduced together by design. Like like how dumb do you think we are? Like and that's and then that's why when people say like whoa if we are saying that we accept every refugee except muslims that doesn't mean that we can't accept muslims well you know like yeah we're we're idiots okay sure if you like if we believe that like and and that that proves my point that you shouldn't be the government shouldn't be in the business of picking what religions like just like you know in at Maybe. least not within the law Anyway, I we really need to move on to the. No, next I want to say one more thing. People are free free to call me an idiot. That's fine, or a hypocrite. At this moment, I am sympathetic. Oh, I wasn't calling you. The, I, I know, I know. I'm talking about the audience. Um, I'm at this moment. I am sympathetic to the idea of saying we acknowledge that there is systemic and well documented discrimination against certain groups. As long as the law also acknowledges the opportunity for other groups, that there is a lesser burden to prove um this what was the what was the language um okay so the, the this is the, we the shouldn't the persecution no. because it's so it's just what it's just understood it's established it's uh, you know it's like th this is such a obvious setting a precedent for um religious certain um, certain groups getting religious privilege like you're like oh it's okay if you say this as long as you also acknowledge this right it's like you know what i mean like it's like such uh, obviously that's going to be misused obviously that's going to be misused like what are we talking about and they're like hey um like as if in, in an islamic empire we could be like um i don't know yeah muslims get priority everywhere um unless well we could add this language but with the understanding that if uh christians and jews and other people are abiding by islamic laws that also would be included like yeah okay congratulations you added the language like these are all like footnotes that you're adding at the bottom but the, the main language of the law is just like you open the door to a whole bunch of it, 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 it's a curse it's a curse upon the country that you open the door to and you're like whoa but he, but there are footnotes like okay great fantastic like just sure sure i just want to acknowledge this uh, mm, comment here by neo studios <laughs> saying armin you are dumb this is so beautiful i i love this i love this thank you so much for making me the neo studios saying armin you are dumb hindus are getting uh, persecuted uh, in pakistan and bangladesh you closet islamists 
Sure, yeah, and we have never talked about that. <laughs> we never bring attention to that. We completely ignore it. Uh, we try to hide that um, the news about Hindus getting persecuted in Pakistan and Bangladesh. In fact, we don't want anybody to know about this. Like, don't we joke are... about that, Armin. It's not true. Really? You think that's not true? Like, are you, well, like There are dumbasses who are going to believe that. Well, I mean, the dumbasses would believe that even whatever I say, like, oh, okay, sure. They, like, do you really think any, okay, if you think that was serious, if any, okay, never mind. Okay, sure, sure, sure. But Neo Studios, um, believe whatever you want, you are beyond hope. I don't know what to say to people like you. Like, okay, just to be clear, because Susanna thinks like, this is how much Susanna thinks of you. Susanna thinks you're so dumb that you might actually <laughs> think that what, what I was saying. Think think that what that says about you. Oh, no. Susanna, people like you have lowered the standard so much that Susanna has to assume that when I say we don't actually talk about um, Hindus being persecuted by Muslims in Pakistan and Bangladesh, you're so dumb that you might actually believe that that's I'm, 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 this was a mask off moment and I'm telling you the truth. Like, that's how stupid you are. Uh, but okay. Because you actually might be that stupid. I have to be more like direct with you and to tell you to, uh, to go watch, just go watch our channel and see how many times we actually have brought attention to this, to this situation. We have long interviews with Hindus in Bangladesh. We have had every, every time there was news um of hindus being persecuted in bangladesh or pakistan uh, and it, it got on our radar we covered it um so yeah you're an idiot uh congratulations maybe do try to be do better um and i'm a closet islamist well i mean here i'll fix that Armin. for you I shada anna la 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 therefore convert to islam no closet anymore transparent and open this was all taqiyya the entire my entire ex-muslim career was a, oh a giant God. 15 year uh, taqiyya with the with the direct intention from the very beginning i was trained by the mullahs Armin. in tehran for me to do to come out of iran to be trained as a secret ex-muslim as a as a warrior against hindutva this was a oh 15 year long plan and this whole time i was doing taqiyya um <laughs> oh okay go ahead yeah, yeah. thomas treaty is no, here yeah wait new, new city uh, when when susanna said armin again that shows how stupid she thinks you are okay because she actually thinks that you might actually believe all of that but go on yeah hi, hi, no I, I i'm sensitive about it because part of the reason why i'm sympathetic to some of the ideas of caa in principle is because I'm so aware and so pained by the horrible persecution and ethnic cleansing that Hindus are facing in places like Pakistan, Afghanistan, and Bangladesh. It's mm -hmm. like the more I learn about it, I'm openly horrified. And so this is why I have this like motion well, emotional reaction. And I get torn yeah, about but you these kind of Okay, but you can't. But I don't. Okay, I think like I could use some dark humor about things to bring attention to it. I, I find if you let me let me do what I do, Susanna. If you're not comfortable with it, like let me be the way I am. I don't. I can't. No, I know. Like, I was also just explaining my take on CA. I know, but don't like. But 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 I wanna I wanna like humiliate these idiots in the live chat, and this is how I do it. So don't. Well, like, also we don't have so many questions to go through. <laughs> Uh, yeah, but don't tone police the way I do things, okay? Um, yeah. I'm not happy with myself right now. I'm going to be honest. Why? Why? I feel like I really muddled and fucked up my thoughts on the, the CIA thing. The CIA thing? No. You did good. Which one? When when we were talking in the beginning, when we were talking about CIA. Um, the, oh. Well, you, you want to clarify? You have a chance to clarify. Well, no, because I'm still like. I I didn't I didn't hear you say anything that was like not that was not well thought of. I don't even rem remember what you're referring to. The CIA doing what exactly? CAA, the Citizens oh, the Amendment CAA. Act. Oh, the C. Okay, now now no, I understand. No, I think you did very well. I think you were very well informed. 
you're just being hard on yourself. You know more than more than these a lot of these people in the live chat. Okay. Okay, so here I'm not it. pleased. Anyways. Hey, here's the thing. If here's the thing. If you said something that you now if you later realize that maybe you were wrong about, that's a that's great because what we do with that is that we come and say like, hey, I was wrong about this. I looked into it. This is actually the right way to, of thinking about it. And we could use this as an excuse to demonstrate to people what a healthy attitude, what a what the proper attitude uh, we should have towards being wrong about things, to be open about like, True. hey, I was wrong. Yeah. So we could use that. It, it's a good thing for us to be wrong about things sometimes so that we could use that as a way to demonstrate how you fix it. How you yeah i need to go back and listen to what i said like i want to actually yeah. really structure my thoughts about it it's, it's okay, well, people it... underestimate how like difficult it is to just respond to things off the time like, no, no, I, I think yeah that's i think it's very um takes a takes a lot of maturity for you to be concerned about getting things right or wrong like the fact that you care about that the fact that you're concerned about that and the fact that you want to address that and come up with a more accurate description that that takes a lot of maturity and i think like you should celebrate that oh well thank I you like yeah i was just thinking yeah. about that it's like mm -hmm. mm, could have done that better anyways um oh wait first question. read this one no okay. read this one um tojo audio is saying never trust anyone that doesn't make mistakes or get things wrong they are dangerous people true or admit admit that they make mistakes yeah, yeah good 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 yeah exactly exactly atheist republic needs your help we've been the target of many legal attacks by hindu nationalists ever since our founder armin Avabi blasphemed against hindu deities we have retained legal counsel to help us defend our access to our community in india we have started a fundraiser that will help us afford to tackle many legal issues including judicial harassment and censorship whatever you can contribute will go a long ways in helping us in this fight link in the description below 